when you read about where you're going to spend millions and billions of years as opposed to this brief life, which is over like a mist. You start in the Bridada Shah to hear about the gates of Sheol, which will not prevail against the Kehilah. But then you find that this phrase is actually in the Tanakh and that the that Sheol is a shadowy, gloomy place. But even Yaakov or Jacob said that's where he was going, Genesis 37, 35. So the righteous go there as well. It's a place where Moshiach went and we know this is not just a creedal formula, but we know this from the scriptures that first of all, there's a promise that is the Holy One of God, the Moshiach, would not experience corruption or shahat, that's uh, decay, that's uh, the corruption or putrefaction of the body. But it also says that Hashem will not abandon him to Sheol. So he has to go there, but he won't be left there. And um, we find out that it's the place of the righteous dead that Moshiach proclaims salvation to. And death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, oh, Sheol. Where is your victory? So Mashiach ben David went down into Sheol and he made proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. And this is his victory. He descends as a victorious king but he also saves Jacob and all the other righteous dead because although he was forsaken and did go to Sheol he did not remain there and we have various scriptures that are important and um, when you get into the Torah and you look at all these, these passages about Sheol, it's quite sobering. And um, it says drought and Heat sees the snow waters, so doth Sheol those who have sinned. So Sheol seizes the ungodly. The wages of sin is death. And when you get to the idea of hell, you see it's the place of of Deron Olam for the unrighteous. It is a place of punishment, not just a valley called the Vale of Hinnom, 
where the Canaanites worshiped Baal and the far god, the far god Molech was worshiped by sacrificing children as we're doing in this abortion holocaust that's going on. But the fire in this dump yard burns continually like the fire of hell. And this idolatrous practice, uh, the prophet Jeremiah predicted God would visit such destruction upon Jerusalem that this valley would be known as the Valley of Slaughter. And King Josiah tried to clean things up, but when you read about that in 2 Kings 23.10, uh, it's a good try, but we know it's not enough. This garbage dump of Jerusalem, where the filth and the garbage of the city, including dead bodies of animals and even dead bodies of executed criminals, were thrown. But you know, because it says, in a, like a rich man in his death, Joseph of Arimathea was right there to get the body from Pilate and put him in a keber, which is a word found in Isaiah 53. And uh, these fires, however, burned constantly. And there were maggots in the filth and when the wind blew from that direction over the city, the awfulness of the odor was quite evident. And also at night, wild dogs howled and gnashed their teeth as they fought over the garbage. And we see these kinds of images. We see hell described this way. We see everyone unfit for heaven winding up there. And uh, the fire is hell fire. And the word Gehenna or Gehinom is a place of punishment where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, where there is outer darkness, where there's fire, a fiery furnace, where there's wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth, all the things you think of when you think of the Valley of Gehenna or Gehenna. And then in the book of Revelation, you have hell described as a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And that's where the final Fuhrer and his Navi Sheker will be thrown, Revelation 1920. And that's where the, the devil and uh, his angels will be forever as well as all those whose names are not in the book of life. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20 verse 10. And uh, we know that the reality is greater than the symbol or the description. Human language is impossible to describe this horror. This is why Moshiach ben Dovid tells you, don't, don't rejoice that your ministry is going so well. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Rejoice that you have escaped these horrors that are coming on the world. 
And uh, before you die, you need a Genesis 4630 meetup with the Savior. Because when you read that portion, you find that Joseph, the Savior of the world, in verse 30, it says, And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face. In other words, like Miriam of Magdala, she was ready to die because she had seen the face of the Savior. Yosef Chai, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Chai. When you have a meet up with him, when you know him personally, when you know what Rav Shaul knew on the Damascus Road, when you see him face to face, then you're ready to go. You're ready to leave this world. But if you don't know him, if you're a stranger to him, if he if his name is a byword, a matter of mockery to you, or if it's just a piece of paper, some name written down somewhere which means nothing, you're not ready to leave this world. Because he has come. Genesis 45, verse 5, to save. Yosef and Yaakov said, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Moshiach came into the world to save sinners. Yes, grieve about your sins, be sorry for them, but don't carry on forever because that's the reason the Savior came. And he works all things together for good. The very evil that you did brought you to the Savior, not because of any good thing you did, but because God can take the vilest sin and turn it around and work it for good. And that's why we know that we are blessed. And in, in Job chapter 24, verse 19, he speaks of Sheol. And I've been thinking about Sheol all day long as I proofread Genesis, because it's mentioned several times in the book of Genesis. Drought and heat seize the snow waters. So does Sheol, those that have sinned. Sheol is seizing people all over the world every day. Young people, middle-aged, old people, famous people, rich people, poor people. Sheol is seizing them. And by the grace of God, we can escape the clutches of Sheol. And even the, the Kehilah will not be seized by the gates of Sheol. It will prevail even against those gates. You see, the gates keep the dead inside. And the gates are very strong, but not strong enough to destroy the Kehilah of Moshiach. Upon this rock, I will build my Kehilah, and the gates of Sheol will not prevail against it. And that's why we thank God when we see that expression, gates of Sheol in the Tanakh. And also, when we get to the end of Hosea, and we see, O oh, death, 
where is thy sting? We see the glory of what God has given us, that he has actually saved us. And uh, Hosea says, on the third day, he will raise us up. And we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we know that the scriptures are clear that O Sheol says, I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. Yes, I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. I will redeem them from death. O death, where are your plagues? Where are your, where is your punishment? O Sheol, where is your sting? Where, where is your destruction? Hallelujah, this is the glorious thing about Moshiach ben David, what he saved us from. Look at Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Moshiach said, I will ransom many. I came to ransom many. Only God can save Israel from national extinction. After its judgment, Israel will ultimately be redeemed and will bring forth fruits of repentance. And this will be realized in the end days. And Rav Shaul applies this verse 14 in Hosea chapter 13 to the resurrection of the Moshiach, which guarantees the resurrection of all believers in Moshiach. But when you're doing what I, what I, what I have to do as a proofreader, when you have to mull over every occurrence of the word Sheol in the entire Bible, after a while, it starts to sink in. Now, I was going down the stairs at Beth Shalom, and I had a heavy bag of ice, and my right leg just caved in on me suddenly about seven steps from the bottom, and I sort of took a, a dive toward the floor. I didn't, I didn't really have a chance. I should have tried to sit down, but I stumbled forward and went into a dive. One of the founders of uh, Jews for, Jew, for, uh, for Yeshua uh, may, have, may have died like that, uh, with that kind of fall on the steps of the subway. Uh, he was someone I knew personally well. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, my hand instinctively went out to cushion my fall. And when it did, it slammed straight into the wall. And when it did, my finger next to the little finger dislocated and had a ghoulish angular look as if it had been torn off. And as I was looking down at it in the darkness, I was realizing at 80 years of age how flimsy and feeble and temporary this vehicle called the human body is. And as I was today, one day later, going through all these Sheol references and exactly what the Bible says about them. It was making a very big impression on me. And I'm telling you today that the Lord wants you to think beyond tomorrow or next week or next year or a decade from now or two decades from now or your retirement time or your golden years, or the time of your demise when you're in intensive care in the hospital or in the nursing home, or whatever the final days of your life are. 
he wants you to think about an eternal home. And that home is why Moshiach came into this world. If you are preaching a Moshiach who is six feet under in Old Montefiore Cemetery, the whole point of Psalm 16, verse 10, is completely ignored and of no help whatsoever. The word shahat, which means decay, the place of decay, like a pit, or corruption, or rigor mortis, or putrefaction of the body in the burial grave. This term occurs about 30 times. And what I have to do now is I have to create a cross-reference for every one of these occurrences in Job, in the Psalms, in Proverbs, in Isaiah, and in Ezekiel, and in Jonah, to Psalm 1610. Because Psalm 1610 says the Moshiach's body must not see shahat. Don't live in La La Land. If you really have a Messiah in Old Mount Peoria Cemetery, ask for his body to be exhumed. When you see the putrefaction, you will be completely relieved of your delusion that this person is the Messiah. Now, I'm going to do this because I want people to know that in Jonah, it says, you brought my life up from Shahat, O Lord, my God. Jonah is spared Shahat. And that's why he is a sign of the Moshiach who is spared Shahat. His body did not see decay. When they looked into the kever, the grave clothes were collapsed and untampered with. The head, uh, the head wrapping was neatly folded up. And it looked as if whatever had been wrapped in the grave clothes simply dematerialized and materialized outside the grave clothes. So that the grave clothes simply collapsed neatly in the form of the body that had been there before. There was no rifling of the clothes, no tampering with the uh, takrahim, no ripping the covers open, no, no activity that would be done by a grave robber or somebody coming in there to take the body for whatever reason. And then once this empty tomb was discovered, and what was discovered in it was more than an empty tomb, but evidence of a resurrection. Then the one that was there started materializing in various places on the road to Emmaus, in the upper room, in the Galilee, by the Sea of the Galilee. And he not only materialized, but he dematerialized. And we find out that the Bible is true, utterly, completely inerrant. Now, I can trace my grandfather all the way back 11 generations. He came from England. He arrived in the Boston area. And I know his name and all of the sons and grandsons and great-grandsons 
down to my father, down to myself. But the difference between these people and the people of the Bible is you're talking about a family of nomads who can trace their family line back to Abraham, who could trace his back to Adam. And that this family line goes down to Joseph, the savior in Egypt, and then all the way down to Yeshua, the savior from Sheol and Gehinom. And it is a story that is seamless and perfect. Now, there are ignoramuses who call themselves uh, J-E-W-S for J-U-D-A-I-S-M, and they try to find flaws or um, contradictions in the Bible. Not so much the Torah, but the Brit Hadashah. But I have a book here called Bible Dic uh, Difficulties written by Gleason Archer. He goes through all these things and shows that there is absolutely no contradiction or problem in the Bible. It is the word of God, it is true, and it is inerrant. If you want to, to bet against it, and if you wanna go on with your life as it is, and if you try to keep your life, you will lose it. You will lose it to the fire. You will lose it to the gates of Sheol and to the maggots of Gehinom, which are right there in the last couple of verses of Isaiah. The grave worm is waiting for you. It, it, it would be the greatest mistake of your entire existence that you would have to regret for coming eons, millions and millions of years in the future to neglect the salvation of your soul. Joseph tells his brothers, don't feel bad about this. God sent me ahead of you to save lives. God sent Moshiach ben Dovid ahead of you to save souls. And he wants to save your soul. Father, I wanna pray right now that someone will come to a saving knowledge of Moshiach ben Dovid. They will turn to him and find him while they can that they will not wake up on the floor of a basement like I was yesterday morning in the dark with a broken finger in pain having fallen and the ice would not even help me. And I, I know that the Lord was showing me that Pride goes before the fall, and that every person has the pride that brought Adam and his children down. And we have to repent and humble ourselves and come to the Mashiach like a little child and open the Bible like a little child and read it like a teachable little child. Mashiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, Give me a craving for the pure milk of the word of God. Help me to understand it. Help me to believe it. Help me to turn from all evil and receive it so that my soul will be saved in the day of eternity. And everyone said, amen. God bless you.